evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to the 9-11 memorial service uh, this 2012. At this time, we would like to invite uh, Elder Gary Johnson to come and give the invocation before we begin. Our Heavenly Father, it is with a, a great feeling of appreciation that we come together tonight to remember and honor and reunite with the those who have lost families and loved ones on the occasion of 9-11-2001. There have been many since that have lost loved ones in the battles that have been fought to preserve and protect our freedom. We thank Thee, Father, for their sacrifice. And we come together tonight to remember them and to honor them and to pray that thy blessings would be upon them and their families. Now may those who have been called to speak to us tonight have words come to them that will be comforting and uplifting to us. May we be blessed by thy spirit in abundance here tonight. We pray in the name of of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh.
Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Madam Ambassador, Senate Vice President and all Senators, all delegates, Minister Yano and all members of the Cabinet, Mission Deputy Mr. Richard McCrensky, members of the Civic Action Team, citizens of the United States here, and everyone here this evening. Allow me once again to join our Board of Trustees, faculty and staff, and especially our students to welcome you to the campus of our college, Palau Community College. Every year since September 2001, we've gathered here at the campus of Palau Community College. We come here to remember the victims of the tragic event of that day, September 11, 2001. We now know that over 3,000 people lost their lives. We know that they hail from as many as 80 countries. So we are here to remember them. We are also here to pray and remember the survivors, the victims, the family members, business associates, and friends of those who died on that fateful day. We are also here in solidarity with our, solidarity with our friends from the people of the United States of America, Palau's closest friend and ally and a great supporter. As a result of 9-11, a war to preserve our freedom, decency, and rule of law has been fought on various fronts. So today, we also would like to take this opportunity to thank the members of the United States Armed Forces and remember all those who have paid the ultimate price. This evening, we also would like to take the opportunity to also name the members of the United States of Armed Forces who hail from Palau, who have also paid the ultimate price. So tonight, in addition to remembering all the victims and all the survivors, I'd like to ask everyone tonight, especially Palauans, to remember Corporal J.G. Malwat, died in Iraq in 2004, a Marine. Sergeant Sonny J. Moses, killed in Afghanistan in April 2011, U.S. Army. Corporal Mresvang Iraged, killed in Iraq in June 2007, United States Army. Sergeant Jasper Obagrairur, killed in Afghanistan in June 2009, U.S. Army. And Specialist Filton Uwegi, died in Iraq in April 2008, from the United States Army. So this evening, there are many people, many things, many events to remember. But we thank uh, the Almighty for giving us life, for guiding us, for guiding our leaders, and for blessing our countries, the Republic of Palau and the United States of America. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, once again, all the faculty and staff of students, Welcome this evening to this remembrance ceremony of 9-11. Thank you and good evening.
We are honored this evening to have Her Excellency Helen Patricia Reed Rowe, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary from the United States of America to Palau to give us her special remarks. His Excellency, Excellency President Johnson to Rivian, Senators, delegates, ministers, traditional chiefs, Palau Community College President Patrick Talley, the faculty, students, and administrators, honored and distinguished guests. Good evening and thank you. Thank you, Palau, for standing with the United States and, for the, and with the international community on this, the 11th anniversary of 9-11. Thank you for your sons and your daughters who have all contributed and served with us in our military. And thank you for those whose names will be forever etched in our history as they made the ultimate sacrifice. I think the one thing I will always remember about September 11, 2001, was the beauty of the skies before the actual attack. It was a beautiful fall day on the East Coast with blue skies and almost cloudless. The sun was an autumn sun. Those of you who had visited the East Coast of the United States during the season of autumn have probably seen those skies and the extraordinary colors of the season. And the beauty of that day seemed to make the act of violence more surreal more chaotic and more horrific. Such a senseless act of brutality committed not only against Americans, but taken the lives of citizens from over 80 countries, from all religions, from all races, and from all walks of life. 9-11 was not a political statement. It was just a cruel, senseless act designed to terrorize. Today, as we gather, we remember that 9-11 was not only an attack on the United States. It was an attack on the world and on the humanity and hopes that we all share. We remember that among the nearly 3,000 innocent people lost that day were hundreds of citizens from more than 80 nations. They were men and women, young and old, of many races and of many faiths. On this solemn anniversary, we join with their families and with their nations in honoring their memory. We remember with gratitude how the world came together as one. Around the globe, entire cities came to a standstill for moments of silence. People offered their prayers in churches, in mosques, in synagogues, and in other places of worship. And those of us in the United States will never forget how people in every corner of the world stood with us in solidarity, in candlelight vigils, and among the seas of flowers placed at our embassies. We remember that in the weeks after 9-11, we acted as an international community. As an international community, we have shown that terrorists are no match for the strength and resilience of our citizens. The United States is not and never will be at war with Islam. Rather, with allies and partners, we are united against Al Qaeda, which has attacked dozens of countries and killed tens of thousands of innocent men, women, and children, the vast majority of them Muslims. This week, we remember all the victims of Al-Qaeda and the courage and resilience with which their families and fellow citizens have persevered from the Middle East to Europe, from Africa to Asia. To nations and people seeking a future of peace and prosperity, you have a partner in the United States. For even as we confront economic challenges at home, the United States will continue to play a unique 
leadership role in the world. We will continue to live our values at home and share the best we have. Around the world, we will continue the hard work of pursuing peace, promoting the development that lifts people from poverty, and advancing food security, health, and good governance that unleashes the potential of citizens and societies. In closing, those who attacked us on 9-11 wanted to drive a wedge between the United States and the world. They failed. On this 11th anniversary, we are united with our friends and partners in remembering all those we have lost in this struggle. In their memory, we reaffirm the spirit of partnership and mutual respect that we need to realize a world where all people live in dignity, freedom, and peace. God bless each of you. God bless the Republic of Palau, and God bless the United States of America. Sulan. Thank you. At this time, we are honored to have His Excellency John Santori Byung, President of the Republic of Palau, come and give his special remarks. Your Excellency, Madam Ambassador Reid Raw, Honorable Senators and Delegates, Vice President, Dr. Talay, members of the United States Armed Forces, ladies and gentlemen, it's a solemn day. It's a day for us to remember the victims of 911 in New York. So, on behalf of the people of Palau, I'd like to extend our heartfelt condolences to the families of the victims of that horrific day. 911 in New York. The victims who suffered the consequences of the acts of terrorism by the Al Qaeda came from all over the world. As our ambassador said, some 80 nationals, 80, 80 citizens of, thousands of citizens of 80 countries died that day. I watched on television on September 12th at about 8 p.m. in the evening the tragedy of that day. It was surreal. It was incredible. I thought it was a movie. But the events of that day sent shock waves around the world. Pain and suffering were felt by the survivors and the families of those who died that day. So we are here to, to remember the victims and to learn the lessons of that day. Number one, the sanctity of human life. Every human being breathes that breath of life which belongs to the Almighty. And those who died were victims of evil. Unprecedented acts of violence and terrorism. <clears throat> so as a result of that, the Americans and their allies, including Palau, have risen to defend our freedoms, human rights, and our way of life based upon democratic values. And so far, we have been successful. Vigilance is the price of liberty. And we have to be 100% right. Because one mistake can cost suffering and pain and the loss of lives to so many. So I'd like to know how many of you here were in New York and saw the horrific events of that day. Would you please raise your hands? Isaac Soradab is my chief of staff. It was September when the United Nations General Assembly was being held in New York. And my chief of staff was then the director of the Bureau of Foreign Affairs. 
and was there with several Palawan officials. And he advised me that when the airplane struck the Twin Towers and the dust covered the city, they had to run out of the hotels with their suitcases in tow and were rescued by others and were immediately brought to our embassy in Washington. But they were that close to become, to, be, to have been victims of that horrific act of violence that day. So Palau is fortunate not to have lost a life, and we are fortunate to this date not to have suffered any acts of violence against our citizens. We are grateful to our young boys and girls, young men and women who have joined the U.S. Armed Forces to defend and protect our way of life and our citizens. And for that, you are most grateful. And on behalf of the people of Palau, I'd like to extend our profound gratitude and appreciation to the United States for being our fortress. So far, we've been so lucky. And I'd like to recognize the U.S. Uh, Civic Action Team members who are here today. They represent the U.S. Armed Forces, and we appreciate your presence. Also, this week, on September 15, the United States Marine Corps will have the military exercise on Peleliu to commemorate that um, defining moment in our history when the Marines landed on Peleliu on September 15. So for, for all those uh, sacrifices made by the U.S. Armed Forces for Palau, we are most grateful. I believe the second lesson we learned from that uh, fateful day was that the terrorists represent the forces of evil. And they're against the values we share here, our human rights, our freedoms, and our democratic systems of government. So we must, as a nation, continue to promote our close ties and friendship with the United States. We are so fortunate, in my view, that we are under the United States defense and security umbrella so that we can enjoy our human rights and freedoms. So I appreciate the, the naming of some Palawans who have sacrificed their lives for us in those uh, hot spots around the world. So that's a lesson we learned that it takes a force greater than the force of evil to ensure our protection. And thirdly, I'd like to also say that the acts of terrorism, the acts of violence are never excusable. So to bring this point home, I like to remind our people in Palau, our young people, that sometimes the acts of terrorism does not come from the outside, that sometimes our own people become victims of acts of violence by our own peers, our own citizens, our own people, and we must condemn that. Perhaps you are safe to this date from external threats of violence and terrorism. But I think we have witnessed some horrific acts of violence against our own citizens, committed by, by our own citizens. And I stand here today to honor and pay my respect on behalf of the Palawan people to the victims of 911, to the survivors and their families all around the world to express our appreciation to the security of our nation under the U.S. Uh, 
defense umbrella, and then to remind our people, our young people, that you must extend a hand of respect and friendship to all your neighbors and your friends and your peers in school, in everywhere you find them. Because sometimes we talk about the international forces of violence and terrorism, but when it comes to that one victim, we don't care where the threats came from, or where the attack came from, because the pain is the same, and the loss of life is the same. So we must remember the sanctity of human life. So I think the lesson we learn, and I want to impress upon our young people, that we are here to express our views about 911, the violence, the senseless acts of terrorism, but we must bring it down to home. So I, at this time, like to encourage our young people from PCC to Palau High School to all the schools in Palau and to everyone to respect every human life in whatever human forms it appears, whether Palawan, an American, Japanese, or Korean, or even your own fellow Palawans, to respect that person. Because unless you are careful about little things, we can't expect you to be careful in the big things. I think um, Elder Gary Johnson would bear this out. I think it's from the scripture. He who is careful in that which is little is careful in that which is much. So I think the, the lesson we learned today, we Palawans here, other than my chief of staff, Isaac, is to become a peacemaker. We cannot have a peace-loving nation unless we have peace-loving people. So this, this evening, Dr. Talay, I'd like to bring the lesson home because I saw and witnessed some acts of violence uh, recently and um, that sent shockwaves around Palau. So that's my um, small uh, reminder to our people tonight. But let's continue to praise the Lord that we have been safe and secure all these years since 911, been safe and secure from natural disasters, from external threats, from whatever sources. But we have suffered some local acts of violence, which I condemn strongly. And I urge all parents, mothers and fathers, teachers, professors, employers, businessmen, politicians, and everyone to urge and to encourage and inspire our young people to be peace-loving, to be good citizens, wherever they are. And to the students, let me say that uh, we have a special relationship with the United States, and we have that unique privilege to migrate into the United States freely with no visa, and that's an envy of many, many nations of the world. But if you uh, commit crimes, you lose that privilege. So for your own benefit, I think if you are peace-loving, if you care about your neighbors, I think you will have a much better future. So for that, I once again would like to, on behalf of our people, express our gratitude to the United States for having kept us safe and secure all these years, and to express our condolences and best wishes 
to the survivors and families of those who died on that fateful day and to once again uh, express our gratitude and appreciation to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice to defend and protect our way of life, our human rights and freedoms. So for that, I'd like to end by asking the Almighty Lord, Almighty God, to bless the United States of America and the Republic of Palau. Thank you very much. Thank you.